Hey guys, Wandering the USA here. I cannot believe that, oh, I was going to say, I couldn't believe it was quieter in here. There goes a rooster. I want to encourage you guys to grow some sort of a garden or some sort of a, anything. Even if you have no space, no, no way to dig up the ground. Um, I rescue a lot of animals, so I have a lot of these swimming pools that have either gotten holes in them or cracked, you know, they've seen their days. And instead of throwing them out, you can get some, if you're buying, I don't buy my dirt, but this is all compost and recycled, you know, little areas or animal hay recycled. So, um, anyways, you can get dirt. You don't have to dig it up if you don't want to. I do hand dig all of my dirt. I've got at least 14 different areas of gardens. Um, but I'm going to show you just a tiny little bit. Not, I'm not going to show you everything. I, for one, I really need to clean up my property. It's been a long, hard winter. And um, a lot of animals have been rescued this winter. But for two, not everything is... Well, I need a weed. I need to do a lot of things. So um, this rosemary, of course, w overwintered. This Swiss chard did not. It's been in the ground about a little over a month. It's doing great. This tiny little lettuce plant right here, he did overwinter, and he is the same. That's that little guy right there also overwintered. This little guy is the same as that big guy right there who overwintered. And then that first one, this little guy, is the same age as that guy that overwintered. And I'm hoping that they're going to go to seed soon so I get free salad seeds. Free lettuce seeds are awesome. Um, that onion overwintered. It's doing great. I'm hoping it goes to seed. This is very abused arugula. And not only did I have a board over it part of the year, I just, I've just totally abused it. And it's doing great still. And it's going to seed, so I'm really happy about that. Those little flowers will produce seeds. They're edible right now, though. If I wanted to eat those flowers and the entire arugula plant, it would be awesome. Arugula is great in eggs. It's great as a breakfast. All winter, you can have fresh greens with arugula. We did get a light snow. Um, we also got some frost. We did not go to a hard frost. If we would have gone to a hard frost, I would have probably had to use some sort of freeze protection on these guys. But as it is, they were completely abused and neglected all winter. So I've got all kinds of dogs going crazy. That's a little, he's a little happy guy. The first guy is that you heard is, um, he's actually scared of people. So this is, um, well, this is a bed of carrots that have started. That is uh, sweet potatoes that I'm hoping go to seed. And I have not been successful yet at getting those guys to sprout. That is some very abused garlic that has been in the ground for, um, well, all winter. And can you even see it? No, there's the garlic. Very messy area. So sorry about that. But I've got wood mixed in here for, for, for multiple reasons. I do the, um, I do... I do, like I said, I do all this by hand. I cannot afford ground covers or weed cover. You know, I cannot afford those type of things. So I use wood as barriers. I kill out a lot of weeds with woods. But all this is done by hands, no till. I just did all this by hand. Um, let me show you another little garden that also overwintered. I'm going closer to the ducks. I had to put up all the ducks for the video. And that's the rooster. <laughs> Uh, so this is these carrots overwintered. They're doing great. Um, they they I planted them right before winter, knowing that they could overwinter, and they actually grew a lot during the winter. It's garlic mixed in with the carrots. That's a little Swiss chard. He's been in the ground about a month. He's not doing so good over here. This is also lettuce that's going to seed, which for sure this lettuce is going to seed. I do not know why this lettuce looks so different than the lettuce over there, um, but this garden obviously is just, it just gets different sun, it gets a lot more shade. So different things thrive over here than over there. This is, oh look, it's a little onion starting to come up right here. That's a little onion, that's the only onion I see there is, let me pick that while I'm right there. Pick that little weed, these are all pea sprouts. Oh. Another little, this is a batch of carrots right here that's starting to come in. All that row right there is carrots. So, you can, you can plant, oh, there's a little carrot that started to come out of the ground. Look at that. 
Let's see if I can save him and give him a little bit more dirt. Otherwise, he'll have to be eaten soon. Um, but, oh, I'm covering up the camera. Sorry about that. But, uh, anyways, this is a little tomato plant section. I actually have, I planted at least 10 or 15 plants of each variety. And I just have these three ones. One, two, three little tiny baby plants come up so far. Which is crazy because I started them indoors at least six weeks ago. And that's all I've gotten. Pop oh, here goes another little guy hiding right there. So some of these might still pop up. But this is a little bed that I prepared. It, this underneath this tarp is completely well. It looks like it looks like this when I covered it up. Um, but I dug all this with a pitchfork or a, a wider fork. I don't have a broad fork. I can't afford a broad fork. Can't afford ground cover. But I had this old um, upholstery fabric, and I just used that to suppress the weeds. So this will be a nice little garden bed. Bed. Hopefully, a lot of the weeds will have died out. And um, I'm so sorry, buddy. I'm sorry. I'm going to get away from him because he does not like people and it stresses him out to be close. So I'm going to get out of his little eyesight and hopefully he'll calm down a little bit. He's a good boy. He just he just gets stressed out. So there goes a little cut that I used for seedling start. I'm going to go way over here. There goes a... I don't know if you can see it. I think it's a vulture. So, okay, here is a little garden patch that's not... You can see this is just all an open field, it looks like. But I actually have little rows. I guess I'm still too close to him. I have little rows going. Here's a little pea plant. Here's a squash. There's a bunch of squash. And this squash will grow up and suppress the weeds. That's corn. Already popping up corn. That's a bean of some sort. That's a little squash plant coming up. And there's some more squash. The squash will grow up. Well, you guys have heard about Three Sisters. Three Sisters are amazing for multiple reasons. Corn sucks nitrogen out of the soil. Here's some corn. Corn sucks nitrogen out of the soil. And beans add nitrogen to the soil. When the corn grows up, the beans have somewhere to climb on. They can climb right up the corn stalk. And then the squash, it grows out and it suppresses the weeds all around it. So even though this is unweed and looks really crazy and unkempt, it will all take care of itself. So this is just one little spot that's doing really good. He's chewing on a bucket. He can still see me, but he's not, I'm far enough away. He's not stressing it. So anyways, I don't, I feel like, I feel obligated to share some sort of a video giving people hope during times like this that are so stressful for so many. Let me see if I could turn this camera around. No. Okay, I don't know how to turn the camera around. <clears throat> I'll just turn it around. I don't know if I'm going to be in the frame, but um, I feel obligated to make some sort of a video about it because I know what it's like to stress out. I suffer from PTSD, but I have found so many things that give me peace. And one of them is watching a seed pop up. The first place that God came to us was in the garden. And I, there's something really, really special about that to me. Um, he walked with us and talked with us there. And it's that's not the only reason. I mean, it's just beautiful to watch a seed pop up. But when I am gardening and when I'm out in nature and when I'm doing things and helping animals, there's something beautiful about that. And I hope that you in some way during this hard time can find that peace. Whether you get a pool or use a... I didn't even show you the Jerusalem artichoke in the containers that I'm transplanting Jerusalem artichoke is amazing once you let me see if I can go over there without making him bark once you um once you oh, I don't want to step on this guys 
Once you plant Jerusalem artichoke, once it's established, which it establishes very easy, you literally never have to plant it again. It will plant itself over and over and over again. So <laughs> it's also a crop you can harvest in the wintertime. Um, so getting closer to the ducks. Yeah. Yeah, I already fed y'all. You're doing good, though. Okay. This bucket right here has Jerusalem artichoke that I started at. I'm going up to transplant. Jerusalem artichoke. It's also called what? I can't remember what else it's called. Sunchokes. Um, it is amazing. It is in the sunflower family. But these little... I could actually show you some since it's going to be transplanted anyways. But it has these little tubers that are um, right here. They're like potatoes. But you can um, harvest them all winter long. Here's a little tuber. He's a tiny little guy. But he's going to grow up to be really big. So little tubers sticking out. Um, but they're in the sunflower family. They've got a lot of health benefits. But once you plant them, you never have to touch them again. They can go through drought. They go all winter. As a matter of fact, they taste better in the winter than they do in the summer. So, sorry about my feet, people. I, I'm, I'm a farmer. So, this is a little bed of them that is starting to pop up sunchokes that are still on the ground. Those are where I got the transplants from. There's also, um, what is that called? Oh, there's cucumbers planted around here, too, that are not popping up whatsoever. But there's a hose in the background. Here's an empty swimming pool ready to be used for something. But I don't, I don't, honestly, I don't do a lot of swimming pool planting. Just when I run out of garden space do I do swimming pool planting. So here's some onion seeds. Oh, here's some little blueberry bushes that I'm hoping make it. Um, and so far they're doing good. I've got this little container working as a greenhouse on the ones inside. And then these ones outside. One, I didn't have enough room in the container. And two, I'm just experimenting to see how the difference goes. But I propagated those off of blueberry branches. And they are going to establish roots. Let's see. Yeah, they're, I'm getting a little resistance already. So they're already starting to establish roots. This is onion that I planted from seed. And it's all coming up. I need to get that into the ground. My peppers are not coming up yet. But anyways... Please get out and enjoy nature today. Please plant some sort of a seed that you don't have to rely on anybody else to get your food. You can absolutely do this on your own. You don't have to have money. You don't have to have fancy tractors, fancy equipment, expensive things, dirt amendments, none of that. I use what's around me. When I don't have mulch or, or uh, spent hay from the animals bedding, things like that, I'll go get stuff from the woods leaves and mulch in the woods it's right there for free so i've got i've got a lot to share with you that's a broccoli plant that died i need to get that up it didn't die i stepped on it and i stuck its head i broke it off right there at the right there at the stem and i stuck its head right here Hoping that it would, I knew that it wouldn't, but I was hoping that it would take again, and it didn't, so I need to get that up and let it go to mulch. So, anyways, love y'all. Be blessed. Bye.